and two picks and bans for the first game between these two teams. It's Series 2 of the day. Paris Saint-Germain are on the blue and Team RB are on the red side. And Jules has a, a cable. Just, just got to look after just, my boy, Jules. Just clip him up, mate. Just me. clip him up. There Thank we are. You. Jace banned from PSG and a Zach from Team RB. No surprises thus far. No, not at all. I mean, taking the Jace away from Thal, that is, you just have to. There's Absolutely. no way. And Kasing, you have to take away those picks. It's like every time you're on blue side banning against RB, you have to go, okay, so two of the bands have to be, have to be the Rakan, have to be the Jace. There's two, they're two very dominant laning opponents, and Kasing is a wonder boy at this champion. It makes the first ban phase so interesting between these two teams, though, because it opens up so many more picks that you wouldn't have had in other games. I, the jungle is going to be that much more open. And again, Thresh hasn't been banned in the last two games. It has to be banned against Kasing, you feel. Even if your first pick for Cly, you have to be banning the Thresh if you aren't as confident. Because if Kasing gets his hands on a playmaking support like Thresh, you already know you're at a disadvantage. There's a few options here, though. You've still got the Galio open. That's been 90% pick ban. It is going to be the Gragas of Flex, therefore, Kaime and Sertorius. We've seen Sertorius play that in the past. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, Galio, I think you said open, it's going to be an immediate response if that is going to be the case. A lot of options still open for Red Bulls, though. Could get something for Cedrion, who's been a standout performer for them. Securing an AD carry for him early on would be potentially one of their early draft strategies. I think Cedrion's been an excellent, excellent addition to the RB roster, so... Galio isn't as strong on 7.12 as he was on previous patches. Of course, did receive a slight nerf, but still strong enough for Team RB to uh, lock him in. Can be played in the mid, of course, even in support. We've seen it in one or two regions. It's yeah. not, not that good in support, but you can still play it in support. I think like, it's like when it first came is out. Is it 50-50 like... win rate right now? I think one loss and one win in support. So. Oh, okay, well, then it's OP. <laughs> it's clearly, what, clearly RB OP. RB love 50-50s at the moment. They've had two draws. They're now looking <laughs> for a third with that Galio pick. They will Ooh. lock in the cars as well. Nice. Still Rek'Sai here, still Lee Sin for yeah. Kaime. There's a lot of different options. A lot of big picks here. And I really like the, the Galio pick up here because Magic Phoenix could play it, and he's I think he's very competent at the Galio, but I would like to see him on a, a more carry orientated mid laner. Yeah. And Thal, and the reason why Galio is still picked to this very day, regardless of the nerfs, is his massive impact with his ultimate. Their heroic entrance is just such a game changer in terms yeah. of just mid team power spikes. It's almost like a share, not global, but it can be if you play the map correctly. Yeah. We do see Kyrae locking in at the Brom here for Clyde down that bottom lane. And surprise, surprise, Corky might be the lock-in here for PSG. Yeah, high presence for Corky on the current um, patch right now. 7-12 makes him very powerful in the mid lane. Good resurgence of Corky. We love a bit of Corky mid lane. Uh, again, oh, that is yeah. boring. <laughs> it's so boring. It's it's <laughs> Blanc was playing it last split as well, even before the buffs. So I'm not surprised to see him pick it up. Picked it up last week. Very strong Corky player. However, it is boring. Yeah. to watch, because it's just poke, and it's, it's and he has got a bit more burst. Now. He's got a bit of burst, that. yeah. With the Phosphorus Bomb and the magic damage, RB now looking for their next pick. A lot of options still available for them. AD carries, mid laners, see where they have to go. I, I think that you locking in something for Cedri in this early on, so that you don't have a limited pull for him going forward is really important for RB. They have shown that the Kasing Cedri in lane has been a major facet of their victories. So I think getting him something early on like this is a fantastic move for RB gives him something that can carry. I mean, Kvaris has got a lot of carry potential, hitting good piercing arrows, has a bit more of a, an, a basic attack oriented build these days, but still very powerful AD carry in the right hands. And Cedrian has shown that he has favored Varus quite heavily over some other AD carries in the past as well. And the big important thing to touch on there would be, there's a lot of setup for Mujin. Yes. As soon as you hit that six, you've got Change of Corruption. Thal has got the Taunt from level two if he wants to take it then. I mean, that's the problem with these squishy, non-CC junglers like the Kazakhs, like Nidalee. They haven't got a lot of setup, but with two lanes already kind of put in here, locked in for RB, it's going to be very easy for them to do that. Something we haven't touched on is the combo between Kazakhs and Galio. Hero's entrance onto a Kha'Zix that goes deep into the enemy team. You often think about Hero's entrance being used as a peeling tool to keep a hyper carry or a high priority target alive. You can also use it in combination as an engage when you have a hyper mobile engager. And Kha'Zix doesn't really engage fights, but you can certainly take the fight to the enemy team. When you bring a Galio on top of that that basically exhausts everybody in the area, Kha'Zix then survives a bit longer, gets a bit more work done. Love that combo. I think it'll be really, really cool to see that as the game progresses. That's why it works so well with the, with the Rakan, with the Thresh, with Callista as well. You can just chuck him into that back line. We do see the Ken and the Zyber ban coming out from PSGs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sing Zillion. If you've been here last Don't week, you Felix. wouldn't be so surprised. We saw Zillion play I was support away. last week as well. I was, I was away. Yeah. Oh, nothing to say for myself. Cut that joy in its <laughs> little 
I had a really lovely weekend, Zillian, though, so, uh, Good time, good time. <laughs> Zillion Pick here for RB and PSG will lock in the Tristana for Nardius. Now looking okay. towards the jungle or the top lane here. Still a couple of options open for them. Yeah, so Quilly dashing over the bands really quickly. Zaya and um, Zaya and Renekton being the banner away for RB. And we do have a Zyra and a Kennen as well, taken off the board for PSG. With Kennen being banned here, you imagine that the uh, PSG lineup is predicting Galio to go mid here, which will be revealed in this final pick for RB. Again, I would, wouldn't be so scared to send Ta uh, Tal top lane with this Galio into the Rumble matchup and then give something sort of a little bit more competent, I guess, versus the Corky, but... There's a bit of spice here, though. You can pick either Gangplank or Fiora pretty easily into yes, the Rumble yes. and totally decimate them, and Tal is known for his Gangplank and for his Fiora. It doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. Oh. It's going to be the Vladimir. Another person that syn synchronized well with the Galio, though. You yes. can get into that back line and get jumped on pretty easily. So Magic Felix settling for the Blood Mage in the mid lane. That would have been beautiful, though, right? To see uh, Thal on one of his carry oh. carry champions, that GP or Fiora. But regardless of the fact, Magic Felix is going to get this nice scaling matchup coming up against the Corky. Corky, not a massive damage threat like you were saying. He's got a little bit more burst in the phosph Phosphorus Bomb. But other than that, he's going to have a fairly safe lane. Sustains there for Magic Felix. And Mujin doesn't have as much setup there, but he's definitely going to look towards that bottom lane and top lane to make things happen. And you can imagine Cedrian being this dominant AD carry in that bottom lane. That's exactly where he's going to focus. Nardis can take so long to scale up. Ply, he's got his work out for it. This is a matchup that actually, you, you you classically say that Tristana pushes most other AD carries because of her uh, passive on the explosive shot, but Cedrian and Kasing with this particular duo actually will shove lanes incredibly quickly. This might be a matchup where you see Tristana get shoved in by somebody, which is very interesting to see because you don't see it too often. But having a range support does that as well. Yeah, the yeah, melee yeah. Support. It's, a, it's a lot harder for the Braum. Although Braum I'd liken to this composition because you can block the chain of corruption, you can block the bombs, you can block a lot of the damage. But you do soak it yourself if you well, take it. you do, but that's kind of the slot job. Damage right? It's the support's job. Yeah. So you've got, you've got really good ways, I think, here of forcing team fights with the Galio. You've got, obviously, like you said, the Vladimir that can get his way into the back line. The Kha'Zix can get his way into the back line as well. And you've got good ways of resurrecting with Kasing, you know, keep a, a hyper carry alive through both Heroes' entrance and the ultimate from uh, the Chrono Shift from Zillion. So good, a lot of good ways of keeping your carries alive and keeping them fighting in the middle of a team fight. But when you look at the uh, PSG lineup, they've, gra they've drafted a really good siege composition. You know, with a Braum, with a Tristana, a, 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 a Corky, great poke, great tower taking capabilities as well there, especially post Trinity Force for the Corky. I think that's a really, really good way to snowball off the back of structure taking here for PSG. And although they don't have too much CC, I quite like the Rumble as well. It sets up well with that Siege, as you're saying, because you put the Equalizer behind the tower, you force them away, and then you can just continue the Siege. And you've got the Gragas there to try and get in. Let's get on into the action. Paris Saint-Germain taking on RB, second series of the day. Here in the European Challenger Series, it is me, Medic, and you, Excoundrel, casting this game. And uh, it's going to be a spicy one, Excoundrel. I can sense it already. What kind of spice? Uh, so I'm quite partial to garam masala. Garam masala? I also like a bit of Do paprika or turmeric. I'm a big paprika fan, yeah. so I'm going to go for a paprika but game here. Having grown up in India, I I'm, I'm more into the actual spicy spices, like the hot spices rather than the thymes and the sages and the basils, the, the boring spices of the world no one loves. I don't know. I, I think you need to be... I think you need to be a little bit more appreciative of the basic spices No, here. man, you gotta hit it, you gotta blast it with flavor. If it's not burning my tongue, it's not doing its job right. I'll remember that next time I cook for you. Yes. <laughs> you sh I don't think you've ever cooked for me yet. Would you like me to cook for you? No. Okay. Because you're, you're a I'm boring good, spice I'm man. actually a good I'm cook. I'm sure you're a very good cook. I'm sure you're a That's one of my few qualities. Cook. A chef in the making, perhaps. Leave the casting career to the side. <laughs> I'm just going to start up with that. You know, you know, I think you're a good casting. We've worked together for a long time. So it's just just banter with the lads. We'll go down to Nando's. We'll get a bit of spice. We'll be fine. Thanks for after uh, this series. Paris Saint Germain. I, I, wasn't I wasn't worried beforehand, but you know, now that you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I also want to talk about the fact that you were saying the combo with the Rumbo Ultimate here for PSG. You've got the Braum Ultimate. That's a great way of comboing with Rumbo Ultimate. You've got the Body Slam from Gragas. There is a bit more to offer on the table here with the Rumbo that we've previously seen. You are getting shoved in a little bit early here from Nadius. You're not quite level 2 here for Kasing. Can't get that double bomb down. So again, the level 1 shove will be in favor of Nadius here. Magic Felix going aggressive in this lane though, putting pressure onto Blanc early on. So Scandal, something I, I want to talk about that 
Cast is often overlooked in, in sort of favor for compositional ideas. So we talk about what does this composition want to do? Yeah. You know? We never really talk about how do they win. Mm -hmm. So if win you're looking conditions. at the, yeah, what are the win conditions for these teams? What are the spikes they want to play around? And how do they actually close out the game? Well, PSG really want to start rotating around early turrets. This is a very snowball-y, structure-taking composition. Especially post-15 minutes, we were expecting Trinity Force to come out on the Corky. It's a big spike for them to play around. Tristana, when she gets Static Shiv and can shove waves a bit more readily. You want to take that first turret in the bot lane. You want to rotate as a unit. You want to be able to use that grouped composition to just basically run your way through turrets. Zone people away with the Equalizer if you have to. Zone people away with the Gragas Barrel if you have to. But you'll be able to consistently did, you know, ram turrets down here as the PSG guys. Get Arby your battering ram for the turret. Get your battering ram for the turret. RB is a little bit different. They don't really have a, a sort of clear win condition. They've got great team fighting capability with the, the, the Galio and the, the Vladimir though. So they basically want to try and force PSG into situations where they can engage and find these team fights. They want to, they, they might want to be able to then look to use counter siege and engage, use the Galio and the Kazix to find engages, use Cedrian to find engages and then get to those mid late game team fights where they will decimate with the Vladimir. So more about playing around objectives, vision control, trying to make the engages happen without yeah. Paris Saint-Germain realizing that they're happening. Exactly, because you've got so many team fight tools for RB. You've got Kasing's ultimate. You've got Cedrian's ultimate, which can lock people in place. You've got the ability to reduce damage using Hero's entrance. And the fact that, that the, the team wide, the, the taunts you can get out from the Galio is so important as well. And the fact that Vladimir is a monster yeah. in a team fight. So, you know, you really want to look for these team fights because you're not going to go. I mean, you could split push, obviously. You have Vladimir, he clears waves. You could go to a 1 3 1 here to try and force things away from a siege situation, but you want to try and fight as a fight. The fight. rotational speed, in my eyes, is quicker from Paris Saint Germain yes, as well with the core key. He's always able to get across those walls, so it makes it just that little bit faster. We did see a little bit earlier on Mujin looking for an invade, but Kaiwei spotted it out and Mujin backed away. Both junglers have gone for that tracker's knife, as expected. Absolutely. Want to get that extra vision control down early on. Thus far, it's been pretty even between these two teams. A slight gold lead in favor of Paris Saint-Germain, both coming from that top lane and from the jungle, as Sartorius expectedly pushes Tal up towards his tower. That Galio suffering slightly by the hands of some nerfs this patch, but not so far on the losing end that he has been dropped out of competitive play. No, he's still, still, Galio's still good. He still does his job. Not quite so dominant, but does his job. I mean, Galio's job realistically is to provide. Oh, I just. That's, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second because yeah. I've realized I'm, the Galio changes on 713, not on 712. So he's still very strong on 712. Not, not changed at all. Uh, so that's my mistake. I apologize for that. I'm, I was just I've been playing too much solo queue this week. Yeah. I'm, getting, I'm just like, oh, Galio, now nah, I don't need to ban him because it's fine. Ban I'm nearly yes, back. I'm, I've, I've only come back to League. I played 30 ranked games now. I was When I started playing again, I was at 12. Nearly back to Diamond 5. So good I'm times, mate. Good times. I could join you and we can play games together. Nah, we've just never had a good track history when we play games together. It's more like PSG. Our early game's good. Our laning phase is strong. But when it gets to that, down to that late game shot calling, I tend to hook a cannon into the midst of our entire team. Or you tend to just totally misposition split pushing on an AD carry. And that's actually what we've seen from Harry <laughs> Saint-Germain over the last few weeks. They've, they've tended to play very well early on, but then it comes down to a single shot call late on, late on, very often around that Baron. And they just make those mistakes. They'll really be looking at Cly's experience on Fnatic Academy and on Fnatic and Satorius' experience on Origin to bolster them and to help them with these later game shot calls. Yeah, they have that high level experience on both of these players help steady the in-game leadership, which has been, like you said, a really crucial point of PSG's losses. They're the shove now going heavily in favor of Arby in this bot lane, pushing onto this bot lane tier one. Tristana can clear waves though, quite quite readily. However, she does struggle to clear and get all of the CS under a tower oh, yeah, because yeah, of the yeah. explosive shot. So you can see that CS differential actually extending in the bottom lane. Cedrian 14 farm up over Nardius and hasn't even had to pop the potion yet. Both of them went door and shield. Mugen's actually looking down towards that bottom lane as well, waiting in the wings, perhaps looking for a dive. There's a few pings coming out. Here we go, on to Cly, looking for the stun. One more. Not quite going to connect. Mugen just walks his way around the jungle, went for a little forestry expedition. Wasn't able to catch out any unsuspecting prey. We didn't sort of touch on how 
Mujin can engage fights with the fact that you've got the speed up from the Kasing as well. You speed up the, the um, Kha'Zix, especially he's post level 6 in stealth. Hero's entrance, suddenly you are slamming a Galio into the middle of the enemy team. But the disengage is good from PSG, so they have ways to counteract that. You've got that ultimate from uh, Kirei, who uses the cast to just blast things away. Mujin's going to take a solo Drake here at level 5. May actually re require some help from Cedrian and Kasing right now. But it... The thing is, the reason they can do this, they've got pushing wave in the bottom lane. They saw Blanc move up towards the top side of the map with Kairi. So they know, even if Mujin goes low, that this is a dragon that they can take take uncontested. Exactly, and that's because of the advantages, like you said, that they gained in the bot lane. You shove a wave into the bot lane duo, they need to either make the decision between losing a whole host of CS and gold, or trying to take an awkward route to try and contest the Drake. And they couldn't do that in the first place because Kare was in that top lane. And again, Kare has been drawn to that top lane, specifically because Sartorius has been pushing in Thal so heavily. You know, Kare may be looking to capitalize on that and Mujin. go for a jump. Yeah, Mujin taking... Oh, that's We've a... seen enough junglers die to fight. It's... Oh, okay, okay. Be still my beating heart. Mujin almost he, dies. He, he knew what he was Would doing. Would have been first blood to the to the Gromp. Gromp is actually uh, a toad infected by a fungus. Is it? And it has a name. Uh, Ivan calls it some Sir, Sir Lord of Grumpington or something along those lines. Ivan calls all of the jungle weird names, though. Well, yeah, but that's their actual names because he is a friend of the fox. He is. But yes, it's actually a, a frog infected by a, a certain type of fungus. How did you find that out? Uh, because the buff that it gives over is called the Gift of the Toadstool, and uh, it's part of the lore. I do my research. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Not much interesting going on in the game, apart from a few <laughs> early macro decisions. Uh, trade of the Infernal Drake for what was essentially a red buff coming out from Kyrae. The pushes in the lanes for Team RB are giving them a slight advantage, and with that Infernal Drake, they will scale even quicker to this late game team fighting composition we were talking about. Absolutely. Really, really powerful stuff to have that early on. Again, not going to get the massive, massive impact out of it in this stage of the game, but that's not really where RB want to be winning. RB realize that there's going to be a big mid-game period where Corky will be very strong. Tristana, once she gets the Static Shiv on board, will be very strong. They probably avoid fighting around that time because Rumble, Corky and Tristana can all have massive impacts in teamfights at that point. And again, RB will be waiting to scale beyond that. They either make catches and get that because of people, people being out of position on PSG, or they just weather the storm of the mid-game and then get to that big late-game team fight that they have. It's that one-item power spike for PSG. Leandri's Trinity Force, yeah. uh, BF Sword with a Static Shiv probably coming out from the Tristana. It's so powerful. However, Nardius and Kai have fallen very far behind in this bottom lane. They're at 20 CS down, and we were wondering how much Kai would be able to affect that bottom lane. At the moment, not having the best of times, but 10 minutes in, it is an even score between the two teams, and Infernal Drake on this side of RB, and Kaiwei is looking for a gank down towards the bottom lane. No one there yet. He steps forward to try and distract Cedrian and Kasing. Perhaps help them realize that this is not where they want to be for the time being, but Cedrian and Kasing barge their way in, past the bouncer that is the Gragas, into the nightclub that is bottom lane. Kai actually on Twitter is called the Party Princess, so it makes sense that he would be in a nightclub. Yeah, absolutely. Having a little party. And again, I, I like that move from PSG to try and alleviate some pressure in the bot lane because they were looking for uh, an overconfident Cedrian and Kasing to walk back into lane and not respect the fact that, you know, that kind of tower dive is still very possible with just a BF sword on this Tristana. But Cedrian and Kasing, for good presence of mind, realize Oh, that, oh. the root chain of corruption. Glacial Fisher comes out. It's first blood to Kasing. Team RB pulled the trigger at exactly the right moment. Kaiwe was nowhere to be seen in this bottom lane. Now he's going to come and help Nardius out. But RB have struck first in this game. Yeah, great synchronization between that CC chain. And also what's really important to note here is that this has been based around the, the bot lane for RB. The, the lane that we said during Champion Select that they have huge amount of presence in. The lane that they have been a monster in across multiple games. It looks to be where they're getting their first game kicked off in. RB looking to capitalize on Cedrian and Kasing's bot lane magic that they have brought to the table every single game that we've seen them play. And Paris Saint-Germain haven't been able to play on the other side of the map at all. Although Sartorius has consistently pushed Tal back, she great stun there onto Kasing. Clyde will come in, put up the shield. But yeah, although Sartorius has been able to push Tal back, he's only about 15 CS ahead, and Tal now with the Winds of War can just clear out the waves. No triple Dorans for him, of course that was changed on 7-12, so 
Doesn't want to stack those up, instead going for a Spectre's Cow. Probably up towards a Spirit Massage, if he uh, wants to keep himself healthy down towards, uh, up towards that top lane. However, bot lane is where the action is for the time being, as Sedrin and Kasing looking for the first tower blood. Mujin's on his way, as is Magic Felix, and this tower is going lower and lower by the second. Klein needs to get away, stand beside Nadia as he says that's first tower blood. It has fallen, and Mujin's going to try and leap his way away. Winter's Bite does not connect, and PSG once again unable to react to Team Red Bull. Don't think Blunk had the package there either, so couldn't respond as quickly as he would have liked to. I think what would have been really good was Cly maybe looking for an ultimate, although it wasn't cooldown. So without that ultimate, there was no way I don't think that they could respond to that first t tower take in the bot lane. But Nadius and Cly are going to stand and push this lane in, which is going to stop the early rotation from Sedrin and Kasing, because they will not want to leave this turret just yet. As Sartorius goes behind and clears the wave from Tal. Very aggressive here. Yeah, you would think this was dangerous from him, but they know Kaive's uh, uh, exactly. on the bottom side of the map, so it's really just like saying, okay, well, you either have to stay and try and clear out this next wave. I'm not going to let the wave push in. I'm not going to let you back and get some mana back. Sartorius is just trying to pressure Tal as much as possible. The bottom side of the map is where the action is for the time being. There was Sedrin and Kasing look up towards their own jungle. Kaive tried to smite away the blue, but Mujin secures it for himself. The benefit of having a mid laner that doesn't rely on blue buff is that you can win out those smite wars. I think PSG need to keep the pressure on that bot lane tier 1 right now because if they let the RB bot lane back, then they are going to allow an early rotation. They're going to take Sartorius out of a winning matchup against Tal. And that's going to prevent a lot of advantages being gained in the top lane for PSG. So with that, with the advantages that they are pushing that bot lane in, the Infernal Drake has spawned again, and this is going to be a free take, you think, for PSG. Good use of their bot lane pressure this time to take the neutral objective. Oh, definitely. They really needed this as well. If they lost double Infernal, that would have been a death sentence for them. Even without Thresh in the game, he's able to affect it from outside of the Summoner's Rift. Gold, a little bit in favor of Team RB. About 1,600, which is their average at 15 minutes or so. Well, it's about 300 below that average, but give or take. Uh, you know, a little bit of gold here, half a long sword there. They've also continued their record of getting the first tower in every game they have been involved in. Hasn't always meant that they were going to actually be able to win it out in the end. And actually we're going to see the stun onto Blank. has used the exhaust onto Mujin, has to flash away. Explosive cast, unable to connect. Tristana going back down towards that bot lane. I'm wondering how RB are going to respond, whether they just now rotate their bot lane to mid, which looks like it's going to be the case. Maybe we now see a 1 3 1 start to open up as Magi Felix could move towards the bot lane himself. This seems to be the case. We did think that the 1 3 1 was possible here for RB because Vladimir does like to function in a side lane, especially during the mid game where he can just shove waves so quickly. But they are giving a lot of time over to Nadius to potentially push this bot lane tier 1 in himself. So, Well, this is what we talked about. I, I was asking you, Iskander, what are the win conditions? And we talked about the fact that PSG want to get towers. Yeah. And thus far, they're behind on the tower game, they're behind in gold. But if. They can get Nardius to just sit with the tower for a couple of seconds. Explosive shot does so much damage, absolutely destroys towers. And PSG will be looking for those opportunities. Probably is they need more than just um, Nardius in this bot lane versus the Vladimir to be able to do this because Magi Felix's clear potential with the Vladimir is so strong. Mm -hmm. You just need to use an E and suddenly the wave disappears, especially now that he's sitting on a bit of AEP behind that. Um, Hextech Protobelt as well. He has to be so careful, especially as well, the 1v1 potential of Magic Phoenix at level 11 as well versus Nadius' level 9. Now I'm going to see the bot lane move down here. They're going to keep this bot lane here for the moment. They believe in the fact that the Blank has got good enough wave shove and wave clear to stop Cedrian getting too much done. That was an ultimate for Cedrian, dodged by Blank though. It's always odd to see the chain of corruption because we all know it's an ultimate. But when it misses, it really doesn't feel like an ultimate. It's just like, well, okay, cool. That happened. They are going to be able to get this tower in the bottom lane. They will equalize the turret score and get themselves back within about a thousand gold. Let's have a quick review of the items here, Scoundrel. Mm -hmm. Tal has gone for the adaptive helm in the top lane. Very good into the magic damage from PSG. You've got a proto bow, as you said, on Magic Felix. Blade of the Ruin King picked up first for Cedrian. And across the board, everyone's getting towards that one item spike. Yeah, we're nearly at the Trinity Force with a Corky. 17 minutes into the game. Once he finishes that, that's a big spike for him. Nadius has picked up 
Zerkus Greaves is actually going to finish the Infinity Edge before finishing his attack speed item, which is another way of doing things, by the way. Not necessarily, you don't need to go for Static Shift before you finish the Infinity Edge. This will give him, with the attack speed steroid that he has, big hitting critical strikes. That it will, that it will. About two, well, 1,000 and a bit between these two teams for the time being. It's not too monumental a gold lead, and actually PSG have been able to keep that quite close. Stop the deficit from really expanding over the last four minutes or so. Nadia is still only about 30 CS down. Top lane is about 20 ahead. It's very even. There is a, a Rift Herald on the map for the next two minutes or so if someone wants to go for it. But at the moment, Magic Felix is actually able just to free farm in the bottom lane. And Paris Saint-Germain need to work out how they're going to deal with this. Because at this current time, RB are getting more experience and more gold because they're playing all three lanes. Yeah, they're playing the 1-3-1, one, one, which we thought that, that was where, where they may end up moving the Vladimir to, just so they can try and put pressure in every lane, forcing a team that wants to group and siege to split themselves. And again, this is a difficult situation for PSG to be in because they realistically want to group up as a 4 or a 5 to siege turrets because they've got great siege potential and very quick turrets that they can take on rotation. By going into a 1-3-1, one, one, you elongate that process, you make it harder for PSG to find those openings and you get yourselves toward a late game quicker. And getting yourselves towards a late game more quickly for a composition like RB, exactly as we talked about, is good because they want to be able to team fight. They want to be able to get those item spikes necessary to be just indomitable in the late game and that's where they're heading to. Last split, it was White Knight who stepped up for Paris Saint-Germain, subbing in to replace Steve in week four. This split. It's up to Sartorius and Clyde to try and do the same. We haven't really seen too much of Sartorius thus far. Has got the Leandri's torment completed. We'll be looking to try and shred through those squishy carries in the mid game. The funny thing is that uh, also just talking off oh, the back of does get picked up by uh, Mujin. Funny thing is about the Rumble pick, and you talked about it in the first series of the day as well. By going one three one, you also make it very difficult to utilize Rumble. You make it very difficult to, to get Rumble grouped up on objectives, use that big mid-game spike that he has with the Leandries and, and the further on from that position. And now you're never really going to find a, a situation where people are grouped up to make a Rumble ultimate work. Although they are grouping in the top lane and shoving very quickly, which might even force a response from Magi Felix or just give up the turret entirely. The so wave's quite a way away here. Yeah, it depends on how good the wave clip from Cedrian is right now as well. He's only got Blade the Rune King. It's not like those piercing arrows are going to shred waves. And with Magi Felix shoving so hard in the mid lane, that forces Blanc to respond. So, again, we are back to another 1 3 1 scenario, although, no, more like a 3 1 1. Now, Magi Felix actually pushed down towards the bottom side here, and it means that Blanc can actually go up towards top, so they might look for something. The wave again is a mile away, it's only just coming up to that first tier turret for PSG. Although they have four members up towards the top side, this will be a full on dive straight onto Kasing. He uses the. Oh, Mujin is low there, Cedrion as well. Kasing knocked up, Glacial Fisher doesn't get him out in time. There comes Tard as well with the hero's entrance. Sartorius joins the fray. Mujin gonna burn down and taken out by Nardius. He gets caught up, Magic Felix on his way. Hemo Plate does a lot of work. Nardius gonna pop, not quite enough damage from the Hemo, but Sartorius will have to try and get his way back towards this tower. Magic Felix in once again, the three-man taunt. taunt from Tal is absolutely huge, and PSG are pushed back onto their back foot once again. Ends up being a two-for-two two trade, but PSG come out on the losing side. Yeah, they might even end up losing this top lane tier one as well, which would be a massive loss for them. A, a team fight competition that was designed to fight around this point in the game. They didn't quite make it work. And Magic Felix got a great flank. That was a really important part of that fight as well. Magic Felix got straight to the back line. He forced PSG to split, flash over the wall, forced them on the defensive. And they couldn't capitalize on what was a really good pick onto Kasing. But also, something that we didn't talk about and how effective a, uh, um, a Zillion can be. Kasing bought two or three seconds for Magic Felix to make that rotation because when you see a Zillion ultimate get popped, the, it's a bit like a GA. The whole team fight stops until you can then coordinate and focus that person that comes out of that ultimate or from the GA. And that was two or three seconds for Magic Felix to find that rotation. It was a great ultimate by Kasing because it bought his team so much time to make those rotations necessary to get the, get the, well, get the team fight back on level pegging. The problem now as well for Paris Saint-Germain is they don't have teleport. And Tal, although he had to use his teleport as well to get up to the fight, will have that hero's entrance back up so he can always look to rejoin the fight. Have a look at this. So they all come in and actually look at the time that Sartorius joins the fight. Yeah, I mean, this is so far in the air, but he, look at the position that he takes and look at how low Tristana is. Suddenly she's out of the fight. Suddenly Cedrian is forced to flash.
and then there's nothing left in the tank for PSG because they're already on the defensive. And that will all stem from the ultimate from Kasing. Great three-man tour, by the way. That basically sealed the deal for uh, RB to get a turret off the back of that. But the, the flank from Magi Felix was just so good. And because of where the fight took place for PSG, they were split naturally by terrain, which forced them to make super defensive and super bad positional flashes across the super wall. Super bad. Super bad positional flashes across the wall. There's an Ocean Drake as well going over to Team RB though. Look for Magic Felix who has to pop the Sanguine Pool. This should be a tower take for them. I wouldn't say it's free as they did lose that Ocean. And perhaps lose some pressure down in the middle lane as well. The gold, however, very even still between these two teams. Paris Saint-Germain's early game has been strong, if not devastating. And the Rift Herald, Harriet, as we have aptly named her, will come in towards the middle lane. I like the idea of putting a bomb on top of Harriet to try and stop anyone getting close. Can't quite get the tower. So close right there, but Thal already pushing this bot lane in. Didn't even join for that shove that Harriet allowed RB to gain the mid lane. And it's one base, because that's, that tower is basically dead. All, all Cedria needs to do is now walk up to the tower, and that's going to force PSG to be super defensive around it. I think they're just going to give it up. I think Cedria is literally going to walk up and get a basic attack. Are PSG going to do this? They lose mid lane tower. There's nah, no vision. Nah, they, they put it. Okay, they put a long range fast side alteration there, but they'll see it's control warded straight away. Don't want to clear that, because if you clear it, it gives vision of the area. How they, I don't know if they could do it as quickly as they... As I mean, we... it would be typical PSG to go for a Baron and lose the game. Yeah. That would just, like... I, I want to revive the Dignitas ass throw. I think the PSG throw for Challenger Series is the new thing, because they did it in Split 1, and then they started winning it when they stopped doing it, and now they've done it all through Summer Split. I think the Paris Saint-Germain throw is definitely a thing. I is, mean, is, they is, lost is, a 4-1 lead as well. It's the new dig throw, right? Yeah, they lost a 4-1 lead against Barcelona, so we can't forget that. <laughs> It's the new dig throw. Paris Saint-Germain wants to get setting up around the Baron. Uh, Mujin and Kissing are there to try and push them back. But this is good play from Paris Saint-Germain. I mean, you, you, we may criticize how they've approached some aspects of the game. They know they need to force mid-game team fights because they've got the Rumble, they've got the Corky. So by getting a... Oh, wait, wait a second. Yeah, they get double stunned as well. The Hema play comes in. Magic Felix there on the front line trying to get out. Cly, he's going to pop the Glacial Fisher and just about survive. Exhaust is not going to stop Magic Felix. That Vladimir is absolutely devastating. Okay, you're baiting a mid-game team fire, but your Rumble and your Tristana aren't even there, and you disrespect the ability for RB to just run in and just kill you. And as well as the Cedric. Oh, Magic Felix just runs straight onto the back of Blanc. Once again, mispositioning from Paris Saint-Germain has cost them dearly. I mean, I was about to praise the moves they were making because by getting vision advantage around an objective like Baron, you force a team to respond to you. And, and that's what you want to do, right? When you're a mid-game team fight, you want to force people to come to you in these situations, but just some silly positional play, not respecting Cedric's ability to catch with his ultimate has resulted in a, basically a, almost a free Baron going over to RB, but that Mujin was going to actually jumps the wall, there's the hero's entrance, Magic Felix going to try and take out Kyrie, so there's no jungle steal, can't get it. Nadia's has to jump across as well. RB have been burnt by the Baron steal before, just look back to last week when they lost to Wind and Rain in that second game off a Baron steal late on. Once again, they'll start it up now, 26 minutes in. RB looking to put the final nail in the coffin of PSG, they'll go for the Baron. It's getting chucked down, only 1,000 health left on it. Mujin's there, he can secure it, and they'll go for the engage. Double talk, Nadia's has to try and jump away. Oh, Pike's dead, Nadia's dead as well. You cannot get across that wall and you cannot beat RB at the back. RB showing us exactly why they are a team to be feared by every team in the Challenger series. But PSG, they had that great vision control of the Baron previously and threw it away. And RB capitalized so well. I love the fact as well that they just forced a fight because they are a team fight focused composition. They just forced a fight onto, RB, onto uh, PSG again. And then on the back of that, secure the Baron and another fight as well. I mean, that was so, so intelligent from them just to, to just appeal off Baron, not take the 50-50 chance, take out Kire, and then come back once he's dead and then just get Baron anyway. We talked about it earlier, though, the, the power that Kasing gives with that movement speed buff, we thought it was going to be on Mujin as he was jumping around the fight. It's actually been on Magic Felix. It's like, he yeah. doesn't need to use Ghost. You can just it's run him straight into the back line, and if he gets caught, his Sanguine pulls out. And one thing that Vladimir really benefits from is why he takes Ghost is mobility. I and mean, when we talked about Kissing using on Mujin, it's, it's the same thing for, for Magic Felix, but Magic Felix is a better AoE damage, a better splash damage, better team fight presence when he has that kind of movement speed. By giving Vladimir movement speed, he hits massive ease on the entire team.
Well. He can Sanguine pull right into position for a great engage by Thal, and also can get right to the backline to start dealing some serious damage to the carries. And look how quickly RB had been able to snowball this lead. A few minutes ago, it was 2-2. They were about 100, 200 gold ahead. Now it's a 5,000 gold lead. They have three towers. They're looking for a lot more with this Baron buff. They've used that Rift Hell so well earlier on as well. That's their fourth. RB are just absolutely dominating PSG. Kasing also just gave a level to Magic Felix, gets him to level 16, level 3. Ultimate, this is a good time for them to fight. It's one of the overlooked things of, of Zillion. If you have a team that does well with level spikes, giving the crucial levels in crucial situations is a massive game-changing ability. And like you said, level 16 of Vladimir, that's a level 3 ultimate now. That can have a huge impact in these team fights that could basically open up the entire game. PS P I mean, PSG could lose right now if they don't play this safe enough. Exactly, and I think we have to come back to to the point about PSG, because in picks and bans we were saying they want to force around towers, they want to force fights, they've got great poke, why are they, you know, they can siege. And it never really happened. But, it never really happened. But it's because RB played this so well. What they did is they split into a 1-3-1. And when you split into a 1-3-1, you make it very difficult for the enemy to group, especially when you shove lanes as quickly as Magi Felix and Thal do. You need to respond to that. And when, if you try and race the 1-3-1, one, one, you better be damn sure that they've got no wave clear in the middle side of the map that you can then just roll through like a steamroller onto the turrets. And I don't think PSG were confident enough with that, at that stage of the game to do that. And then they were forced to split to, to focus the 1-3-1, one, one, and then it was by that point, RB had bought themselves enough time to get the item spikes necessary to just dominate these team fights like they have been. Coming back to Paris Saint-Germain, it was next game that they started their winning streak last spring. So if you are a Paris Saint-Germain fan, a tiny bit of hope remains for you. A little bit of light hey, at the end of the They could still summer. draw. They could still draw. Yeah, they can. Well, they could still win this game yeah, technically. Yeah. 6,000 <laughs> gold behind at 30 minutes is not an insurmountable sum. But at the moment, the players they brought in to bolster their team, to bolster their hopes, have not performed as well perhaps as they would like. Sartoria sitting 0-1-1 with the 60 CS lead. That's fine, but look at Kly, 0-4-2 has been the punching bag for Team RB time and time again. Look at Mujin, he's got, I think he's got Gargoyle's uh, stone plate yep. right there. Mujin is going to take that frontline position to survive as long as possible, to give Thal the entrance, to give Magic Felix time to go into the backline and just shred things. You don't really need more damage. Exactly, so. exactly. Well, they are sieging up this tower, still have that Baron buff. For a short period of time, it's uh, on Mujin alone as the junglers, of course, take that extra shrine duration in the mastery tree. Keeps giving the levels to Magic Felix as well because he is the key component of these fights for RB. Give more levels to Magic Felix, does more damage with his abilities. Even though most of the points are now going into Sanguine Pool, so... Oh, well, put them all in there, it's fine. You get about 600 gold worth of stats per level anyway. So yeah. having that extra level does just accelerate that gold lead. Something Paris Saint-Germain have done well is keeping up in terms of farm. Only really a deficit in Nardius, who is about 40 had, farm behind Sergio. Had, had that deficit since the early game, really, yeah. though. So, I mean, he's kept up throughout the mid-game quite well. Doesn't translate into gold, though. There's a 2,000 differential between those 80 carries, about 1,000 in the mid lane and 2,000 in the jungle as well. Mm -hmm. And I, in the support. I think what PSG need to do to keep themselves alive in this game is, is really focus on using Blank's ability to have the range advantage over RB and do what we saw War did in the previous game. Use those missiles to force the RB members out of the fight before the fight even begins. Just keep spamming those missiles, hit Kasing, hit Magi Felix, hit Cedriot if you can, and force them to rethink their engage, engage positions. You know, that's that's really, I think, where the... Oh, okay, Cedriot. Magi Felix coming in with the ghost. Let's get slowed. Flash, Tides of Blood, Hema Blake, Sanguine Ball, not enough. That's a lot burnt from Magic Felix. We'll force him back and get a huge amount of health back from the Hema Plague as well. Blunk. Is down towards that bottom side, so it could push out that way, but it looks like Magic Felix and Tar will not continue to push in bot. Got one minute or so until Baron spawns again, and that's where RB will be looking to set up again. We talked about mid-game team fights being what PSG were potentially looking for. They were looking for sieges with that um, Corky and the Tristana to rotate very quickly around structures. We're at the stage of the game now where RB are going to want to force fights. So RB will be the ones that are looking to collect vision, consolidate their vision around the Baron, and then bring PSG to them, because they are at the stage of the game now where they are in the dominant position when it comes to fights. If I were Paris Saint-Germain, I'd be thinking we need an executioner's calling somewhere. Like, pick, pick, it's 800 gold. You're playing against the Fed Vladimir. You're not building Morello on Corky. You're not building Morello on Sartorius. 
grab one. Grab one on Nardius. All he has to do is hit one auto attack onto Magic Felix in a fight. I agree. And you absolutely devastate the healing that that Vladimir can do. I, I completely agree with you, but maybe he's thinking that he needs his rapid fire kind of more urgently than that. So, but I agree. I, I think that the major issue and PS um, and, and RB have shown it with the way that they've been giving Magic Felix levels. They've been putting Magic Felix on a pedestal in terms of his position in these fights really important that you shut down the Vladimir and again Executioner's Callings is one of the ways to do that. You can always bring, um, put it into um, a mortal reminder especially. Mm -hmm. You will get armor penetration out of it regardless. Exactly. And I mean it's only the Galio that a Lord Dominic's regard would have a huge impact on. Maybe Ma uh, Mujin with the Gargoyle Stoneplate there but I just love more. I love Executioner's Calling as an item. Yeah. Especially when you're playing into healing champs. Oh Chain of Corruption is going to land on towards Kame. He will flash and jump away. To use the explosive cast as well. Not too much burn from RB, actually, only the ultimate from Cedrian. So now they can set up around that Baron. And going for the jungler gives them a huge amount of bonus when they try and set up around Baron. Absolutely, and they are setting up around Baron now. It will force PSG to respond. A lot of penetration on Sartorius. He's got the Leandries and the Void Staff. Doesn't have the penetration boots, though. A little bit scared about the um, taunt, you know, he wants to be able to get out of the CC that the Galio provides in the table, so, and also the stuns from Kasing, but it's a two-man Baron at this point in time, and it's literally Kasing, Magic Felix, and Thal They will know it's away. happening, because Cedrian cleared those wards, so they will know he's there. Corky did use the passage, Magic Felix running in, Whoa, the speed how quick is he? as well! He will play on towards four, Mujin in from the side, Heroes Entrance onto Mujin, they're gonna jump onto the back line, but Blank is still alive, and is not oh, oh, and they oh, four, taunt. Man, taunt. it's huge! And that PSG just getting absolutely devastated, incapacitated, destroyed, and dismantled by Team RB. What a wombo combo there, Medic. What a way to end the game, because this is the end of the game for RB. They will barrel down this middle lane of the map. There's no way, I don't think, that any way that PSG can survive Clive this. stop the minion wave so that... The Tal's gonna have to tank it. I, I agree with you. I still think this is game for RB, but Tal is gonna well, have to tank it for actually, a long time. Cly with the next level shot calls, tanking up the minion wave, but Nardius gets jumped on, jumps away. Magic Felix, can he get it? Yes, he can. <laughs> That's it. Out. That's it. Nice. And that is Team RB taking the first game of this series over Paris Saint Germain. They look good at times, but they were not able to hold out for long enough as Team RB spread their wings and fly to a 1-0 victory. That last team fight illustrated